Hey guys, this is Torna and today we're going to be covering 15 tips or tricks for you guys starting out in Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, as you can see by the game, it is there is a lot going on and stuff, so it definitely is a an idea to kind of have some idea on some different things that are going to help boost you guys, get you guys, you know, further in the game at the start of the game and stuff like that. I've done a couple videos in the past of, you know, a couple different tip tricks and, and stuff, but I wanted to kind of, you know, do a big one that's kind of pulling together a whole bunch of ones that I've talked about in the past or ones that, you know, would be really great for you guys to have. So the first one here is going to be download the game from my link. Um, now that might seem like, you know, I'm just asking you guys to support me and of course I am, but it is actually going to get you some great stuff. You're going to be able to get in a champion. Once you get to level 25, you're going to get a whole bunch of other resources along the way and everything to just give you a huge boost at the very start of the game. The second one here is going to be enter one of these special codes. So I'm going to put that up on the screen. It is superpowers. Now, what does this give you? This is going to give you one, some other resources, as well as Deacon Armstrong, who is a support, but is just insane. He's one of the best characters in the game that you can have early on. Uh, not only does he allow you to get additional speed from his aura here in all battles, a speed aura in all battles is going to be something that's going to be not that easy to find at the start, but he's also got this, which is going to allow him to be able to also fill the speed bar of yourself and your allies as well as once he is ascended up to here he's going to grant an extra turn as well this is crazy you could get this down to a three turn cooldown as well uh he is honestly just one of the best characters that you can have early on so it's definitely a character that you want to get and the third one here alongside the same kind of, you know, track is that supports are incredibly important. Now, currently, you know, I'm running Deacon Armstrong as my support here, who's going to have this lead. She's got the decrease the defense and also the, uh, the turn meter here that's built in. But my other support here is Godseeker Aniri. So she is not technically a support, but she's got a supporty kit. She revives someone, fills their speed bar resets their cooldowns which is crazy when deacon dies and then gets to be brought back and then increases my speed bar more and everything we've got uh this here which heals everyone up decreases the d duration of debuffs uh sorry buffs on all enemies and increases the duration of buffs on my team uh she's just really great increases the healing she isn't technically a support but she could be uh but you know along that lines supports are just really great to allow you to be able to kind of you know push through content that you not might, might not necessarily be able to do whether it's because you know your characters are dying whether it's because you know you have the extra revive there's lots of different ways that a support is going to be able to help you know support you Number four here is going to be completing your dailies, weeklies, and monthlies. There is just a crazy amount of resources that you're going to be able to get from this and resources that you'll miss out on if you don't kind of complete these. They're relatively easy to do, you know, just make four upgrade attempts, increase a level by three, summon three champions, etc. Your weeklies are a little bit harder, but, you know, going through them, you're going to get some great rewards, including, you know, a sacred, sh uh, sorry, an ancient shard here and then finally a monthly getting you the sacred shard is going to be really great too so overall you know just making sure that you're completing through those dailies each day completing through you know, as you complete through the dailies you're going to get the weeklies and then finally you've got like the advanced quests that you eventually unlock that you can work through as well number five here is going to be joining a clan Joining a clan is incredibly important because one, you're going to be able to get a whole bunch of rewards just from logging in and doing these activities alongside the rest of your team. You've also got the clan shop in here for going through and doing some of the clan quests and stuff. And then finally, you've also got the actual clan boss, which is going to get you a lot of resources. This demon lord here is just going to be able to give you a bonkers amount of stuff over the course of, you know, the week, the month kind of thing, um, over the course of the, the time that you're playing, essentially, you're just going to get a lot of stuff and it's just a free resources that if you don't go and do it, then you're essentially just, you know, screwing yourself out of stuff that everyone should be getting for free. 
The next one here is going to be continuing through the missions. So these progress missions essentially help you throughout the game, point you in which direction you should be going. So you can see here, uh, I am working through the Arbiter ones. Eventually you unlock some other ones as you're progressing through. However, just continuing on through these, you can see the amount of rewards that you're going to be getting. You're going to get, you know, some potions. You're going to get some uh, energy, uh, sorry, arena refills, a lot of silver, energy, gear. There's lots of really great stuff that you're going to be able to get in here from just purely following the storyline. Even like getting the sacred shard here is going to be crazy. And then finally, at the very end, you're going to be able to get Arbiter here. You're going to get some other characters from the other ones, Rama 2 and uh, Marius here. So it's really great to just you know, continue on through them, eventually get some great characters, and then along the way, just get a whole bunch of different resources for just doing things that, you know, are helping you progress through the game. Number seven here is going to be building a balanced team. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, a team that isn't just all attackers, all support, etc. You want to make sure that you've got a wide, wide variety of different roles that are, are here. So as you can see in mine, I've got Deacon here. We've got God Seeker Aniri. So that's a support here. Uh, well, support um, character. And then we've got defense here, which is she's like a defense support. We've got Rathalos. We've got Real Rule. And then we've got Kale. So we've got like three attackers here and to support. You can also have like some of the tankier supports as well, which isn't going to be a bad idea, but just basically making sure that you have a balanced team, not going all on, all in on like, you know, all in attack, all in on defense or anything like that. You're going to have issues, especially at the start of the game when you might not necessarily have enough artifacts to be able to support them out because, you know, each one's going to need a different artifact set. And if you're using all of your, you know, offense Defensive attack based artifacts on one character, then you're going to need, you know, five times the amount of the exact same artifacts. You're going to potentially run into issues there. Number eight is logging in every day. As you log in every day, you're going to essentially be able to get some really awesome stuff. So you can get High Katan here. Eventually you're going to get, you know, uh, more and more characters, Yaga the Insatiable, and then Darth Aethel here. Um, you've got, you know, some different rewards along the way and everything, but just logging in every day and ensuring that you get these rewards that are just going to help you progress through the game uh, just faster, essentially. Number nine is that a character's rarity doesn't necessarily mean that they are stronger. Someone like Kale, who is still, you know, just rare, just, you know, down here, may be a character that is going to be more viable than some of the purple characters. Looking at some of the characters that I've pulled and stuff like that, some of the, the like, four-star epic characters aren't as great as some of the, uh, like, Jizo is not as good as, like, you know, Kale, for example, in my opinion. So, making sure that you, you know double check a character rather than double check their rarity just because something is you know a legendary doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be the best character in the game and there's resources out there for you guys to be able to do that that are going to enable you to kind of check which characters are great and which characters aren't as great number 10 is making sure that your starter gets to six star that's like your first priority in the game should be getting your starter to six star. I've slowly been working on that. I got a little bit sidetracked, but sidetracked by some really great pulls and stuff, but that's like your big aim towards that. Getting your Kale or your, you know, whichever starter that you've chosen as your first six star character is going to be great because it's going to allow you to be able to farm up your, um, farm up your fodder really easily by being able to progress through, say, for example, the end of the end of the campaign on hard or something, have your Kale solo it, be able to get a whole bunch of XP. And along those same lines, level, uh, sorry, tip number 11 is equip that character with like lifesteal, speed, and offense. Those are the big things that you're going to need at the very start here. Uh, so mine currently is equipped with a divine offense and lifesteal. Uh, I could potentially replace one of those with speed to allow him to be faster, but making sure that you, you know, have some really great, um, really great artifacts on your starter character that you're going to be using to be able to progress through and be able to ena uh, enable them to be like a solo farmer is going to be definitely an amazing idea.
Number 12 is that each character is going to have a different stat priority, which is important to keep in mind as you're kind of equipping them. Someone like Rathalos, for example, we want some speed, we want some attack, etc, etc. He's a classic kind of damage-based character and everything. Kale, same, we want some offense onto him, we want some speed, etc. While if you have a look at someone like Godseeker Aneri, if we have a look at her skills, so this one here, the damage is based off of defense, and this is damage is based off of defense as well, and then this is a heal. So, you know, we want to make sure that we've got some defense on her if we want her to be able to deal some damage. We want to make sure that, you know, we've also got some uh, HP onto her because that way she's healing more as well. Um, well, healing herself up more and keeping herself alive more. Uh, so that way she's able to get her, uh, her res off here as well as, you know, just making sure that she's able to be fast and speedy. So that way she's able to get her heal off more often, be able to get her res off more often, etc., etc. Number 13 is going to be making sure that you upgrade your artifacts. I don't know the amount of times that I've seen people or even myself chuck an artifact onto a character and then be like, okay, so this one needs this, for example. Oh, I obviously know that she doesn't. And then boom, look, she's got the stats and everything. And then forgetting to actually upgrade your artifacts. Artifact maintenance is going to be very, very important. It's going to make sure that, you know, you're getting the best stats on your characters, making sure that those stats are upgraded making sure that your characters are strong to be able to enable them to be able to progress through and everything. It's just going to make everything in the game easier if you actually keep in mind that your artifacts are important. Number 14 is that arena is very important. Arena, you want to make sure that you're doing your attacks constantly. If you miss your attacks, then essentially you're going to be screwing away resources that you could be using for other things. Whether that's going to be, let's have a look. So once we eventually, wow, well, okay. Look, look at this. So we're getting some uh, tournament points, which are important, making sure that we're getting the bronze medals as well. So that way we can upgrade our stuff, making sure that we're getting the uh, Magisteel here. So if we get like, you know, if we go in, well, where is it? Up here into the Great Hall, so we can upgrade our affinity bonuses and everything. Having that magic steel over here for the the forge and stuff to make sure that if we're forging stuff, then we've got that there as well. You know, there's just a lot of resources that you're going to essentially be screwing yourself out, out of if you don't progress through here. Um, like even have a look down here, you know. We've got, you know, Ancient Shards, Gems. We can get some really great gear from here too. So making sure that you're just doing your arena attacks constantly, trying to progress, making sure that you also double check that your defense is set because, you know, the amount of times that someone's probably pulled something and then forget to change their defense despite the fact that they've retired that previous character in it is probably going to be way more than just 0%. And then finally, number 15 is Speed is King. Having fast characters is incredibly important. You're going to be able to get speed gear onto your boots as a primary here, but having speed on here, so you can see, for example, here as a secondary stat on your gear is going to be important as well. Most characters will be wanting speed to make sure that they're going fast, to make sure that they're getting more damage in or getting more heals out or getting more, you know, buffs up or whatever you want. You want to make sure that, you know, you've got that fast gear and get your characters fast because they're going to need it especially if you're doing arena and stuff like that if you're coming up against someone that's got faster characters then potentially you're going to end up screwing yourself over because your characters just aren't as fast but that's it for today guys those are my 15 tips for new players for raid shadow legends make sure you head on down to the description download the game support the channel and everything like that i hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye